when do you need professional psychological help? And then also what kind of professional help would be most appropriate? Hello, my name is Jennifer Van Wyk, and I am a psychotherapist, a humanitarian, and an author. So this is a question I get a lot from my friends and family, and then often actually in the disasters that I work in because the whole idea of psychology is very, still very new in many developing countries. Um, I've worked in places where there's no psychiatrist in the whole country. I've worked in in countries where there was three. Um, I've worked in areas where people are chained because they have psychological disorders. Um, and so they're chained and just left out like dogs, which is absolutely heartbreaking. So this, this topic is actually quite important to my heart. And I think it's really useful for a lot of people because there's still such a stigma around psychology. There's a big fear that if you get psychological support, uh, then maybe you're crazy or there's certainly something wrong with you. Even in Canada where I grew up, it, there's still a, a stigma, even though it's so common and on Netflix, we're seeing all these shows about shrinks, stuff like that. So I understand that it, it's not something that maybe we discuss very often. So when I do trainings about what is psychological support or psychological assistance and, and how, how do you know when to get psychological help, uh, I talk about three main things that you can kind of use to decide if that's something that you want to do. Although honestly, and of course I'm biased. I love delving into the universe that is my soul. I love introspection. And so I personally think there's never a time when you don't need psychological help um, or where it's not useful. Um, I, I see my own, I have my own psychological support that I see regularly and pay for. Um, because actually how I describe it is it's kind of like going through life with a book super close. When you are in your own life, um, you're too close. You can't read the words very well. It's all fuzzy. It's, you can't see the big picture. And so it's really useful to get somebody that can, um, bring the book farther away so that you can read it more clearly. And then you can see how it interacts with other parts of your life. Often I get the question of, well, why would I need to talk to a psychotherapist when I can just talk to my friends or my family? And again, a, a psychotherapist is somebody that doesn't have an agenda. They, they don't care what you do. They don't need you to be a certain person. Um, they don't have a specific view of who you are or who you should be. Um, they're much more removed, right? Whereas friends and family, as much as they love us, they still have an agenda. What you do affects them really, right? So it's impossible to have that separation. So that's why a psychotherapist or somebody who works in psycho psychology, um, it, whether it be a coach or a psychotherapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist, and I'll go into the difference between those four later, um, but that's why they can be really useful in life all the time. <laughs> so what are the three things <laughs> that help you decide if you really want to invest in professional help? Uh, first one is frequency. So what thoughts or how often are you getting these kind of uncomfortable thoughts, these uncomfortable emotions? Um, is it happening often? Is it happening multiple times a day, multiple times a week, multiple times a month or some every few years or once a year, right? Frequency really is a good way to define how much it's affecting your life, which then le leads us to functionality. How much is it deterring your functionality? Does it prevent you from having the jobs you want? Does it prevent you from connecting with others or having meaningful relationships? Um, if you are, have so much anxiety that you can't leave your house, that's really going to diminish your level of functioning. Whereas if you just are kind of scared of spiders like me and you can still go about your life and it's okay. And if you see a spider, you don't faint, it's fine. Uh, you just run away, right? That those, those are two different levels of functioning. And it doesn't matter what level you're at. It's just a good way to assess whether you really, really need professional help. And it's not just bonus of living your life better. The third and last thing is duration. So 
when you have these thoughts or when you have these uncomfortable emotions, how long do they last for? Does it last for two weeks? Does it last for two days? Does it last for two minutes, right? All of that obviously informs how much of an issue it is in your life. So again, frequency, how often does it happen? Functionality, how much does it affect your ability to do the things you love in your life? And how long does it last for? Duration, okay? Um, I would say that with couples, uh, they are notoriously known for not going to couples counseling until one of them has actually secretly decided that they want the relationship to end. And that is too late. Uh, if you are in a couple and you're just sort of starting to struggle, I would highly suggest going to couples counseling, even actually before, like if, if you're in a partnership, just go before there are any problems because the skills and the communication are really integral. And us and our romantic relationships, they are especially, we're especially vulnerable um, and they can be they can reenact a lot of our biggest insecurities. And so that's where most of the, the issues are that we have to heal will come up with, which is a gift uh, when you really think about it. Uh, but it also creates a lot of struggle. And so I really highly suggest going to couples therapy at least once, regardless of whatever's happening or not happening in your life, okay? So now, lastly, I'll just talk about the difference between coaches, psychotherapists, psychologists, and psychiatrists. So coaches are people that have maybe have taken some training um, to be a coach. This training could be online. It could be a week long. It could be a year long. There's some amazing coaching training courses um, or they don't have to take any training. Actually, anybody can call themselves a coach. There is no no way, no supervision of coaches. It's uh, it's kind of a free for all. So if you decide to go with a coach, there's so many fantastic coaches out there. However, I would just, it, it would be completely appropriate and I would really recommend you asking what sort of training they have and even actually what sort of supervision they've had uh, because you wanna make sure you're getting somebody who really knows what they're doing and isn't just, deciding to try and make money off telling people what to do, right? Because that can be detrimental and can lead to harm. Psychotherapists, um, at least in North America, uh, all psychotherapists have to have their master's in psychology or master's in counseling psychology. So in North America, I'm a psychotherapist. I have a master's in counseling psychology, which means I've done at least six to seven years of psychology in university. Um, also to be licensed, you then also have to pass certain requirements above and beyond that. For example, I had to have 800 hours of supervision where I had to videotape my sessions and a supervisor would look at it and then give me feedback and just make sure that I'm not doing harm and, and how I'm operating. So that's that all happened during my master's. Uh, and that's what happens for psychotherapists. So you know that they have um, the training and it's a minimum level of training. And you also know that they've had supervision, although actually some courses will not or some licensing won't require. Um, also the th uh, with psychotherapists is there's a college of counselors is another way, word to say it. Psychotherapists or counselors, the same thing. Um, and that college then can um, moderate and make sure that all those counselors are in good standing. So if you were my client and you were upset and you felt like something I did was really harmful to your life and I did harm, you can report me. Uh, and then that I would have an investigation and then I might get my licensing taken away, right? Uh, with coaches, there's no way to report them. They can do whatever they want and, and there's just, um, there's, there's nothing you can do about that or not. Um, with a psychologist, this is a really interesting one because in France, I'm considered a psychologist and in other provinces, I could be considered a psychologist in Canada, but because I did my master's in British Columbia, a psychologist 
You can only be a psychologist is if you have a doctorate. In Alberta, you can be a psychologist if you have your master's. Uh, but the main thing about a psychologist is they're allowed to diagnose. So you've heard of depression, you've heard of anxiety, you've heard of bipolar, if, you, if you've heard of Kanye West, right? Um, psychologists can diagnose uh, mental illnesses or mental struggles, right? I am not allowed to do that. Uh, also, psychologists usually have higher number of supervision or practicum hours, things like that. Um, they also might be more involved in research as opposed to counseling. So yeah, there's those two branches. Won't go into that too much. Now, a psychiatrist is a doctor that has also had extensive training on psychology and therapeutic techniques. And so they're allowed to diagnose and they're also allowed to give prescriptions to medication. Nobody else can give a prescription to medication. So it could be common that you see a psychiatrist for your prescription, but then you see a, a counselor, psychotherapist, or psychologist for the talk therapy because it's really been shown that both together is actually the most impactful. Some people don't wanna do medication, so you just do talk therapy, then you wouldn't need a psychiatrist. Some people do see a psychiatrist for therapy, but that's m fewer and far between because they're often quite a bit more expensive. So I hope that that answers all your questions on the different types of professionals that work in the whole psychology arena and perhaps gives you an idea of how you can know when you might want to seek professional health help. I hope you have a wonderful day. Let me know if you like this video or have any questions or comments and like or subscribe down below and I'll hope to see you soon.